Hello Bobcats. In today's video we will be discussing transition metals in ionic compounds. Now we see here we've got two compounds. We've got um, FeO and Fe2O3. And if you go by the rules that we have previously learned about ionic compounds, you would name this iron oxide, and this would also be named iron oxide. But we can't give the same name to what are obviously different compounds. We notice here that we have iron, and iron is a transition metal, meaning that it can have different charges. So what we have to do to start is we have to determine the charge of the transition metal using the charge of the anion. So we know here that oxygen is a 2 minus, and uh, that means to have a neutral compound, this iron has to be a 2 plus. And then over here, we have oxygen again is a two minus, um, which means the total charge over here would be a six minus. So to get a six plus, we would have to have a three plus. But the easiest way to do it is just to do the re reverse crisscross in this case. And so we know that this is going to be a three plus iron and a two minus oxygen. Okay, so oxygen has the same charge. Now we notice that the iron has a different charge, and that's how we're going to. You, what we're going to use to name the ionic compounds with transition metals. So here we have iron ion with a 2 plus and this iron is an iron ion with a 3 plus. And the way we would name this ion is that we'd say that this is iron and then we'd use a Roman numeral to indicate the charge iron 2 ion and this would be an iron 3 ion because it has a 3 plus charge. Now remember this ion, this Roman numeral does not tell me how many uh, atoms of iron it is, it tells me the charge of the iron. And so this is a 2 plus iron and this is a 3 plus. So in when we name this compound up here, and I'm going to write it in blue, we would name it as iron 2 oxide. And this would be iron 3 oxide. So we now have a naming system for naming compounds that have um, metals with different charges. And some of those uh, metals could be, uh, examples would be we have iron that's a 2 plus or iron that's a 3 plus. It's a transition metal so we have to determine. We don't know what the charge is until we use the anion to determine the charge. You, we may also have uh, like copper 1 plus or copper 2 plus. Another one that is not really a transition metal but it does have two different charges would be lead 2 plus or lead 4 plus. So we have to use the anion to determine the charge. So let's make a couple rules here. First rule is that um, use anion in the compound to determine the charge of the transition metal. we use the anion to determine the charge. And the other one is that we use Roman numerals to identify the charge of the transition metal. So, again, we don't, you can't go to the periodic table and d figure out what the charge of the metal is when it's transition metal. We have to use the anion to determine its charge. Once we know the charge, we use the Roman numeral to indicate the charge. The Roman numeral does not indicate how many atoms there are. 
Now, let me make sure we know our Roman numerals. So if you have a Roman numeral one, that's a one plus. Roman numeral two, two plus. Roman numeral three, three plus. Roman numeral four, four plus. And um, the most you would go up to is seven. So I'll go ahead and write up to seven, but uh, we usually just use one through four. But uh, of course, five would be a five plus. Then six would be a six plus, and then seven, seven plus. But the most common ones are one through four. And those are the charges that we use. So let's practice. Let's do a couple of practice ones. So let's say I have um, Cu SO4. And let's look at Cu2SO4. Okay. Now remember, sulfate is a, a single unit. So I'm going to look at the sulfates here. And in this case, we know that this sulfate is a 2 minus. And since there's only one copper, that copper has to be a 2 plus. And over here, we know that sulfate is a 2 minus, and since there's two coppers, and it has to be a 2 plus charge to be neutral, this will be a 1 plus for each copper. Because it's 2 times 1 plus is a 2 plus. 1 unit times 2 minus is 2 minus. 2 plus and 2 minus is neutral. So when we name these, we would name them as copper, Roman numeral 2 to indicate the charge of 2 plus sulfate. And this one over here would be copper 1 sulfate. Uh, let's take a uh, look at one more, a couple more maybe. So let's look at if I have. Um, Let's say I have PBO and let's do um, SNO2. So we have to be careful here, okay? Now, oxygen is a 2 minus, so the lead has to be a 2 plus. So the way we would name this would be lead to oxide and over here we have two oxygens um, but each oxygen is a 2 minus so that's 2 times 2 that's a total of a 4 minus for the oxygen which means this over here this 10 would have to be a 4 plus to match this. Remember it's 2 times 2 minus is 2 4 minus 1 times 4 plus is 4 plus. So this would be a 10 4 oxide. So that's how we use uh, the Roman numerals and we uh, determine the charge from the anions um, for ionic compounds containing transition metals. And that will be um, that for this lecture. Thank you.